Hello, welcome to another episode of I'm in a Band podcast. Welcome, boys. Will, hello. Woo! Tommy, hello. Oi, oi. James, say hello, please. Hello. Nice hello, good sir. How are we and doing? And I'm Chris, your host. Hello, Chris. Welcome, Chris. Welcome, thank you. Cheers for coming, mate. And cue the music. I'm in a band. I'm in a band. I'm in a band. I'm in a band. Anyone uh, done anything this week? Uh, um, nothing interesting. I'm just relentlessly putting all of your guys' faces into a really cheesy WWE game. I'm really excited for that. Yeah. It's I'm here, awesome. actually. Are we going to make it into a music video? Um, yeah. Yeah. I've, I'm, I, I'm just recording recording your guys' pretty faces over and over again, fighting just a, 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 a blank void at the moment recording it hoping it doesn't glitch and just can see what we get put some music to it uh something funny happened to me uh it happened this morning actually um because uh it's my future wife emma's 30th on monday uh oh, she's yeah. been receiving the odd package i've been hiding them around the house um it's gonna make me look really <laughs> good on monday i'm gonna say because <laughs> i've got literally all these boxes but her aunt has sent us a cake um, and we opened it today. It's enormous. <laughs> Who am I supposed to share it with? Who are we There's supposed to? Two of you. Yeah, it's massive. How many? Like, how many people are you talking about to feed here? How many slices are you going to get out of that nice, bad boy? It's a big square. Twenty, easy twenty big yeah. pieces of cake there. Yeah, because you don't need loads of cake, do you? On top of that, right? It's it's got an edible printed photograph of her face on it. <laughs> I want to see we it. We don't want to eat that. We don't want to eat that. I'll show it to you. After I the think podcast. that's brilliant. I think that's amazing. Yeah, and me. Send me a little snap, snap of that later I on. Will. That sounds wicked. I think, yeah, it's great. Like, if we actually had a party, it'd be so funny to bring out this cake. With <laughs> but it's just the fact that it's just me and her, just like, happy 30th, Emma. Oh, maybe uh, what you could face. do is. <laughs> Maybe you could cut each piece up and then send it to everyone who was coming in the post. Well, oh, yeah, I was thinking about just leaving it on the doorstep and just being like, help yourself, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of Corona cake there for you. Yeah. Cool. Well, I've got a little uh, game for you guys to warm up with. Are you excited? Cool. Okay. Yes. Sort of. You don't sound <laughs> excited. <laughs> What's it called? It's called... Strange lyrics. Who's it by? Zip, 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 da, zoo, ah. What I've done is I've just collected some sort of peculiar, disturbing lyrics. I'm going to read them to you, and then I'm going to list off four artists, and you've got to choose which one it is. Okay? okay. I like this already. Let's have a go. Mm-hmm. First one. We're going to start with vanilla, and it's going to get creepier and, and more disturbing as it goes on. I just want to show you off to my friends. Make them drool on their chinny chin chins. All right, so is it A, One Direction, B, Tom Jones, C, Slipknot, or D, Nirvana? I'm going to go Tom Jones. I'm going Nirvana. I want it to be One Direction. I want them to be creeps and we didn't know about it. You are correct, Will. It's One Direction with their song. <laughs> oh, no. Kiss, kiss. Yeah. <laughs> Wow! Excellent. There you go, I don't know why kid. I could see. I could just see Tom Jones saying "chinny chin chin" for some reason. A little cheeky. <laughs> chin, chin, it's chin. that Welsh, that Welsh accent. Chin, he, chin, he, is, chin. he is quite a. Yeah, he's going to be a bit more of the darker side, though, isn't he? Really. Next one. Here we go. At the break of day, that man drove away. I crossed the street to her house, and she opened the door. She stood there laughing. I felt the knife in my hand, and she laughed no more. What's that? A. Roy Orbison. B. Tom Jones, C, Slipknot, or D, Corn. Roy Orbison. I wanted it to be One Direction. <laughs> I'm going to guess Corn. <laughs> Guys. I think it's Corn as well. It's Tom Jones with Delilah. Oh, oh come on. James, you should have stuck with it. Oh, the voice of the valley. Pussycat, pussycat. Oh, my days. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Who knew he was a go. psycho? We've got two more. We've got two more. This gets getting worse now. Then big bulging eyes and the twisted mouth, scent of magnolia, clean and fresh. Then the sudden smell of burning flesh. Was that? <laughs> a, One direction. Was that A, Billy Holiday, B, Neil Diamond, C, Corn, D, Cannibal Corpse? Neil Diamond. 
<laughs> That's his big hit. I want it not to be the last two now. We'll choose one. Fucking Neil Diamond. Well, corn, corn, cannibal corpse are all shouting. Corn. I'm going to guess corn. Okay, I'm going to go Neil Diamond as well. Guys, it's Billy Holiday with the jazz song Strange Fruit. No! Billy Holiday! Strange wow. Fruit is actually a poem. It's been covered by loads of jazz artists, but I just chose Billy Holiday. Before you comment in and tell me I've chosen the wrong artist. God. So <laughs> far, none of these have been the obvious answer. Like, your, your, your slip knots and yeah. your corns haven't really, you know, delivered the goods on the brutal lyrics yet. Uh, okay. Be careful what you wish for, young Thomas. <laughs> all right, all right. For the sorry, final sorry. one. Uh, I don't know how to say this. Okay, right. I need a live woman to fill with my fluid. <laughs> Damn. Uh, wait, wait, wait. A delicate girl to mutilate, fuck, and kill. Dude! <laughs> <laughs> right. Let, uh, uh, Neil I just, Diamond. I just want to say... <laughs> Neil Diamond. I just want to say that that is the tamest set of lyrics I could get from this song, okay? <laughs> that, uh, absolutely horrendous reading. Absolutely horrendous. <laughs> uh, and I was, I was doing the research for this, and I was reading the lyrics to this song, and then uh, a student called me, and I had to teach a nine-year-old how to play Star Wars, and my mind was just not in the right place. <laughs> it was so messed up. It was, I was like, I was traumatised. Any, anyway, anyway, uh, the options are, this is, real, oh. this is a tough one for you guys. Was it A, Katy Perry? B, James Blunt. C, Donny Osmond. <laughs> D, Cannibal Corpse. Donny fucking Osmond. Oh, Donny Osmond. Yeah, definitely. If Donny Osmond hasn't massive. said it, he's definitely thought it. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's not Donny Osmond. It's obviously Cannibal Corpse with the hit I Come Blood. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Absolute banger. <laughs> oh, my God. I am in shock. I literally... Just, that's See, I've heard of Cannibal Corpse. I've just never, I've never actually heard a piece of their, you know, lovely music. Do you need to? No, no. Judge you by that. Anyway, that concludes. Whose song was it? What? Who wrote it? Zip, 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 zip. All right. So let's talk about let's talk about some of the comments that you can get on your videos. We've had our share of, of negative and positive comments. Right now, everyone's doing online content and shit, and we've put loads of stuff online. Don't be afraid of comments. Here's the bad comments. This is how we take them. Uh, I've got some on my own personal channel that James wants to read to me. Well, that's 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 where this uh, idea all came up, because you got so many views on that on your, your Calstone videos, while well, your Californication one. Can I just explain what that is first? Yeah, yeah, explain yeah. what yeah. that is. So when I was at uni... Um, Someone showed me a video of this instrument called a Kelstone. It's basically like a nine-string guitar laid out flat in front of you, and you play it like a keyboard. It's like a Chapman stick. And um, I sent the guy an email, and I managed to get a free one in exchange for making about 24 YouTube videos of me playing it. Basically got really behind and had to bash a load out, you know, in, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a, did, pulled an all-nighter. And there's a particular video, Californication, which for some reason got 750,000 views. And honestly, it's one of the worst videos I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> we used to love reading the... Because remember when we used to go... When we were gigging and stuff, and um, me and Ross were sat in the back, and we, it was when it was all starting to, like, just skyrocketing. You were getting comments coming through. We used to enjoy reading them out to you in the van. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, like not the good ones, all the negative ones. We used to just sit in the back reading them out to Chris. <laughs> like, it's so funny. So bearing in mind that I didn't ask for this many views, I didn't. <laughs> I I put the video together really quickly, um, just to fulfil this contract. James hit me with some of these comments. <laughs> so, so you stole my table. <laughs> I mean, and that's that's. I mean, that's funny to us because me we've. The amount of references we've made to this instrument being a table, a pair of golf clubs. Um... It has a case, doesn't it, which looks like a golf club case. So I, I just constantly get abuse for bringing my telescope to a gig. and Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then there's another guy, bro, honestly, it's awesome, but the intonation is terrible. <laughs> so when you do the melodies, the voicing of Anthony Kiedis, it just sounds so out of tune. <laughs> oh. 
It was 5am. The sun was coming up. <laughs> is, this is, is what it, he doesn't know. And it's, some people are just so blunt. Could you do better? <laughs> 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 Buy a keyboard. Buy a keyboard. Looks like you would have less trouble if you just played a regular guitar. I mean, he's not <laughs> wrong. I'm not going to lie. He's not wrong. And then here's my favourite one because you called it like a Chapman stick and this one just made me giggle. <laughs> no thanks, I'll take a Chapman stick any day over this washboard with strings. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, is, it, it, it does get you down when you get, you, you know, your phone goes off and you look and someone's just said something horrible. Yeah, I bet. It's just like, oh, oh. It keeps you grounded though. It keeps your feet on the ground, you know? Like yeah. if all you got was like positive comments, you would have so much smoke blown up your ass, you'd have your head in the clouds. No, like, it keeps you real. You, it's, you're, very, you're very right, Tommy. Like, you can't just have positive comments all the time. Sounds like a limp, wet flannel being slapped against a mattress while someone farts into a traffic cone. <laughs> and that was from WR Guitarist. <laughs> Will? <laughs> nice one, Will. Nice one, mate. Was that actually me? Slagging off your own guitarist there. No, that was Ross the other day. I just, I just thought I'd, uh, I'd throw that in like Will's, didn't Oh, I? so I didn't say it. Oh, good. But then, to be fair, Chris... You have commented back to all these people and you said a good one, which does nip it in the bud, really. Thank you for all the positive comments. For people who criticise, I completely agree. It was just a quick experiment. If I had more time on it, I would have made it a lot better and never expected to get so many views. And who's read that? Nobody. Nobody's no one. read No that. one gives a shit no about that, Chris. No <laughs> one cares, mate. No one cares because everyone loves the negatives. Because <laughs> yeah. it's more exactly. fun. I actually went back and looked at some of these videos and I've always been pretty... I always kind of thought they were all really bad. And listening back to them six years later or whatever, actually some of them were all right. And it was kind of felt, it was quite nice to be like, oh, actually, all I'd done is just remember the bad comments. And they had, uh, I think you, were, you obviously always remember the negative comments because we did give you a lot of stick about it. But Oh, yeah, you, it's horrible. Well, that's that's it, what Tommy though. said, it keeps you grounded. It's funny. It's, you know, it's what we do. It does, creep, it does keep you grounded, absolutely. Um, but you do, like, you get one bad comment and the 25 good comments you kind of forget about in an instant. And uh, I don't know what that is. It just must be like psychology or something. You want to come inside and listen to some country music, boy? Obviously, last year we released Following Shadows. We got, you know, we got in uh, Classic Rock Magazine, got a really good review for them. We got on Kerrang! We got on Radio 1. Because we were kind of self-funding it and because we were doing a lot of the PR ourselves, I did a lot of um, submitting to blogs and stuff like that. And we may have got on like 10 great blogs, but there's always the bad ones. And these aren't too aggressive, actually. The These are some of the declined feedbacks um, um you know considering we work with john mitchell who's a you know he's done some big artists like enter shikari and stuff like that so in, in our opinion you go to someone like that because they've got good production skills and it's when people write stuff like um yeah it's okay the song's a bit bland and uh, i'd find yourself a new engineer it's stuff like that and you're like oh that's brutal that's brutal i think when people throw that in though at the end of the comment that I, I, I don't even know like what that's supposed to mean like it's almost as if you're pushing the book there like oh blame blame the engineer blame the engineer they don't necessarily know what they're talking about but they'll still say blame the engineer anyway is it yeah. your fault yeah. is it the engineer's fault whose fault is it i mean some negative comments yeah. are a little bit useful but some of them are just plain wrong and in that case he is wrong he's a world-class engineer and the record sounds fine so but here's a more constructive one, which actually this is the kind of stuff when, once we put the record out that we were like, actually, these are the comments you want to listen to. And it's like, uh, this is just one which says, really cool sound and I really appreciate the production on this tune. This is for you, R, as well. Uh, it's really well balanced and enjoyable to listen. Um, then there's a little bit constraint in the delivery that I, and I was looking for a bit more flow, but keep submitting and I'm looking forward to see what comes from you in the future as a, as a band. And that's the kind of stuff where you're like, well, let's take those comments on board. <laughs> I mean, we're, to each other, we're all pretty brutal, aren't we? Like, yeah, yeah, so like four hours into a session, and instead of going, James, uh, would you just try that hi hat? It would be like one of us pick up the mic, James, just play the fucking snare on the beat. That is crap. Do it again. <laughs> Why is it me? It's always it me. Is always oh, you. Always, always, well, yeah, that's, always that's, that's, that's you answer that question, James. Why is it always you? <laughs> 
I don't know, I've got to go to toast this Berlin scene a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a mic face in your mouth, that's it, so you can't answer back. Just to explain to uh, people listening, we've got a studio and we've got like a little room with our computer in and stuff. Well, it's a big room actually. And then next door we have another room where the drums are and that's where James sits. And there's a bit of a communication breakdown because <laughs> the mics are all on the kit and they're not on James. So he has to sort of lean forward and shout into a mic. And, it, and it, it's really hard to communicate and it can get quite frustrating for, for everybody involved. The best system is when you had a megaphone, though. That was the best yeah. thing ever. Because you'd hear I've it go, still got it. whoop, whoop. Uh, can we do that again, please? Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's just fabulous. I always remember speaking about criticism, though, and you said studios, when we did Echoes of Sound way, way back in the day, and I thought I was going to be the next Thomas Pridgen and wanted to put, like, crazy fills into songs, and John Rivers, who also is a good engineer, he, I went, I was like, I'm just going to warm up and practice, and he went, and I remember playing there for a bit, and he just come in through my headphones and went, why don't you try practicing a beat? (laughs) Like a solid beat. And that's it, and then he just went, I remember thinking that you played a hell of a lot like uh, Keith Moon, purely yeah. because you dr- you, your drumming was all melody. Yeah. It's like there was just, you were following then, the vocals rather than following groove. Oh, there's also another really great comment, Chris, which I missed, which was, why don't you try practising to a metronome, which you practised, you sent that to me yourself. <laughs> which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you try practising to a metronome? Yeah, that was, Look yeah. what's behind you, Chris, as well. This is the irony. He's got a metronome literally on his... Oh, yeah. Is a metronome right there? <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Oh. <laughs> oh, he thought it was just a, a mantelpiece <laughs> ornament. I thought this clock was really weird. So, uh, for any aspiring musicians, this is what a metronome sounds like. There you go. Got a nice little ding feature. Hang on. Ooh. Ooh, oh, that's pretty. Every three beats, every four beats, you choose, you decide. It's a premium product. All oh, right, great. I, honestly, I thought it was a barometer or something, really. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Robert. <laughs> That's funny. I've got I've 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 got some examples here of uh, from some people who are. are well, to be honest, I've I've pulled up James Blunt's Twitter page because he's kind of famous for being able to handle uh, negative comments on social media pretty well. Mm. And I think I think I think we can. Uh, I think a lot of people could, uh, whether you like James Blunt or not, learn a lesson from this man. I'll just read you a couple of some of his best comebacks to negative comments. James Blunt's face fully aggravates me. So James Blunt replies, then sit on something else. Ah. Right. <laughs> Excellent. There's, 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 actually, there's actually quite a nice comment here, but, you know, he's, 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 just, he's throwing them out there, just hitting, hitting back. A little bit of James Blunt never hurt anybody. James's response depends where I put it. Ah. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get one more. Let me get one more. Why does James Blunt sing like his willies being stood on? <laughs> Damn things always getting caught under my feet. Hey. <laughs> but I think this guy's great. Whereas yeah, yeah. you've got you've got you've got you've got James Blunt at one end of the spectrum, and then you've got Ed Sheeran at the other end of the spectrum. Where I'm not I'm not knocking Ed, but he he did the exact opposite. As soon as he started getting negative comments on Twitter. He bailed. He <laughs> bailed altogether, and that got him more negativity. So I'm still laughing at that comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll read you. I'll, I'll read you. I'll read you a couple of the ones that um, uh, that, Ed, that Ed Sheeran got as well that caused him to uh, leave social media altogether. Has he left Twitter then? I, I didn't know that. Well, he, 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 he left and made a big deal about it. It was after uh, I think it was after his Glastonbury performance. The ginger busker fella has pulled a decent crowd at Glastonbury, but he'll drown in loose change. (laughs) Why is there currently a ginger busker guy on BBC One? It's like paying £280 for a festival, only to find out they've let a ginger busker headline. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of just going at him for the ginger busker thing, and he bails on Twitter. 
Oh, yeah. If anything, that's sort of a comment. You're, you're a ginger busker with a single acoustic guitar. You're headlining the, yes. the biggest festival in the world. You have succeeded and, at what you've set out to do, man. Yeah, you'd be like, yes, I am a ginger busker, and I'm fucking playing Glastonbury. Yeah. Why would you bail on that? People have trained to get here their entire lives and failed, whereas I've just done it on the street and beat you all to the point. Yeah. It's the whole, like, I think when you're in a band, if you get some shit or you get some stick from someone you've generally got three other people just to be like, one of you will be like, it's fine. And that sets the kind of balance straight. But imagine just being a solo artist and getting that kind of brutality. You're like, oh, again. That's the risk you take in being a solo artist, though, I suppose, isn't it? You know it. You know what's going to happen before it happens. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, you don't have to split it four ways. So there's a win for everything, isn't there? Oh. So what's, what's our advice for people who... Um have got comments be them good or bad what are we what are we trying to say here i probably wouldn't give any good advice on this so i'm going to stay quiet yeah tommy just you <laughs> just yeah you just keep it quiet <laughs> i'd say just don't let it bother you and fuck them yeah i'd say let's end with fuck them fuck them what else do you say to that fuck them you know fuck who em. cares what they think i'm in a bed That was another hilarious episode of I'm in a Band podcast. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for hosting, pal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Woo, woo. What's for dinner? <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>